Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking Arizona State football. The Sun Devils are preparing for Florida State on New Year's Eve down at the Sun Bowl. We got Michelle uh, Gardner on the line from Arizona Republic to talk ASU. Coming off a recruiting class uh, that currently ranks uh, with a few more possible commits. We'll find out from Michelle, but eighth in the nation or eighth in the Pac-12, 37th in the nation. That's according to uh, 247 Sports and uh, fifth in the Pac-12 last year for Herm Edwards. So let's highlight some of these guys that you're excited about seeing here in 2020. Well, I guess the number one person that everybody's looking at is wide this wide receiver, Johnny Wilson, who literally flipped from Oregon to ASU. And I think that says a lot about your program when you're getting a guy to flip from Oregon to ASU. But I think that's indicative of people wanting to play with Jaden Daniels. Um, and then you've got another wide receiver in Chad Johnson, who's a four-star guy as well. He's been committed to ASU for as long as anybody can remember. Uh, and then there are two more uh, players that in the next two or three days are going to, that are basically ASU bound to, they're announcing at their respective bowl games, their decisions, but there are some things in hand there. So this could be the most talented wide receiving class that ASU's ever had. Uh, and it might be one of the top receiving classes any at, signed by anybody. So I think at that core, when you look at four new guys coming in, in addition to what they already have, I think that's guys wanting to play with Jane Daniels, wanting to play in an offense. When you look at a new offensive coordinator in Zach Hill, who's coming from Boise State, I'm looking for this team to do a lot more passing, and, and that's going to play right into Jaden's hands and right into these wide receivers. Herm Edwards, a California guy, and California the destination for nine of these 17 signees in 2020. Uh, we got Michelle Gardner on the line to talk Arizona State recruiting. Of course, National Signing Day, the second one still lies ahead. Is there any work to be done before uh, the first Wednesday in February? Yes, most definitely. And I think that once they get the guys in hand in the next few days that they we know that are in hand, it's going to be the offensive line. Um, right now, the biggest problem with ASU is they've got five, five out of the seven guys that have seen regular playing time in the offensive line are seniors. Then they've got the two true freshmen that have been playing. In between, there's nothing. They literally have no junior linemen, and they only have one sophomore lineman that's a transfer that really hasn't played much. Then they've got freshmen. So they need to go out, whether it's transfer portal or junior college, and they need to get at least one and probably two offensive linemen. That, that's going to be the biggest area of concern for this team between now and February. Now, it's not tough to envision uh, Herm Edwards in the living room of a recruit talking to mom and dad and winning them over. That's not no. difficult. Um, does he give any indication since you're there to listen to him and uh, converse with the guy, you know, several times a week on a regular basis, uh, what his strategy is in regards to geography, um, pipelines, just basically how he sees the recruiting game and what his approach has been, whether that be, be based on what he says or what you've witnessed him doing over two recruiting cycles. Well, they, he said our home base is California, which you wouldn't want a guy from Ari a school in Arizona to say that, but they're making no bones about it. That's where they want to go recruit hunting, basically. And when you've got guys like Antonio Pierce, this Prentice Gill who has just come over from, uh, from Oregon and He's in that group of, you know, new, young, energetic, white, you know, coaches. Um, and then you've got the new man that they just hired in Chris Hawkins. So they are really investing in good, young coaches that are great recruiters, and they want to go into California and get the best talent out of there. So, you know, I, I he's the same guy in front of the recruits as he is in front of us. And I, like I said before, I think that genuine nature comes through. And the man has just got an energy and a passion for the game. And I don't think that can be, you know, that can't be overlooked either. He really is passionate about the game. And that comes through, too. And it certainly makes sense. Uh, California, Texas, and Florida comprise 40% of the top recruits in the country come out of those three states. And certainly USC and UCLA are not what they typically are or have been and have not been able to hold on to those guys. So instead of them fleeing off to the Big Ten or the SEC, you might as well derail them and have them come into Arizona to play for the Sun Devils. Uh, Michelle Gardner, the Arizona Republic, uh, helping us break down Arizona State football. Michelle, we appreciate you stopping by. 
Anytime.